Today, we're combining some of my favorite things, food, healthy cooking, and a little bit of inspiration. But before we jump into this episode, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to get in deeper conversation with our community, you can do that on our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us financially at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. On this episode, we'll be chatting with Alexis, the creator of the YouTube channel called Stump Kitchen. In this channel, she documents how to cook gluten-free and vegan recipes and how her stump is an important tool in the process. Alexis, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. This is lovely. I wanted to ask you and let our audience get to know you a little bit better. So if you could just tell us real briefly who you are and why you started Stump Kitchen. Um, so I'm Alexis Hilliard. I'm from Canada and I am a YouTube creator. Um, my show is called Stump Kitchen, named after my arm, which I now call my stump. <laughs> and um, I use my stump as a kitchen tool. So like a juicer and a spatula and like a potato masher and I work with a lot of people who also have a limb difference and we just have fun in the kitchen together um, and basically I started it because I decided to become vegan and I had a gluten intolerance and I was like I don't know how to cook for myself so it it kind of made me you know try recipes and I as I was cooking my partner said like you know, you're, you're, this is so cool. Like what you're doing with your arm. And I was finding a lot of joy in how I was using my body in these new unique ways. Um, and it kind of like brought me this lovely happiness, um, which was great. Cause I was al already going through a really kind of hard, um, you know, mental time. I was, you know, diagnosed with depression, had some hard things going on in my life. So doing the show was like this cool way to like bring joy back into my life. Um, and so, yeah, it was like a beautiful necessity that came from my stump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love how it started out with bringing joy to yourself, but now it has grown so much and it brings joy to so many people. I know that um, there are several episodes where you do get a little bit more serious and and deep and then there are videos and episodes where you are more humorous and light and working with somebody and seeing how things go and i love how you are like not afraid of getting dirty and and making a mess um, <laughs> thank you <laughs> and 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 you know you i've seen you do episodes with people with disabilities and some people yeah. who don't have disabilities yeah. um so i feel like you have you have done a lot and your message is widespread. Um, mm. What is something that stuck out to you from an audience member or a YouTube watcher that you feel like really touched you or that pinpoints the message that you want Stump Kitchen to put out there in the world? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I think the one of the first times was actually um, one of my, friends locally that I met here who's also missing her left hand and we met through a mutual friend and we started doing a couple episodes together but before beforehand um, she had told me that you know she had had a lot of negative experiences growing up around her arm and like just yucky stuff that I'm sure you and I can both relate to um, and she didn't feel super confident in the kitchen or that she really could or she didn't really like trust her abilities I guess because of the way that people had been treating her um so when we got together and started cooking she just like 
blossomed and was just like, yes, let's do this. Cause I was just so like, whatever, who cares if we spill, who cares if we make a mess, who cares if it's not perfect, it's okay. And she started using her arm in really cool ways. Like she tried juicing with it and all these fun things. And just to see her kind of come out of her shell, I guess, and um, be so natural and comfortable and just really touched my heart to kind of watch that transformation. Um, but then of course, I'm lucky enough to get messages from people all across the world, like families who have kids with a limb difference um, or, or whatever, who um, are now cooking together and they're using my videos as a, as a guideline to kind of try new things and stuff that they you know, wouldn't maybe have imagined before. Um, or letting their kids just have a bit more free reign in the kitchen. Cause I think some parents are like, Oh, don't make a mess, honey. Blah, you know? And I'm like, it's okay. Just let them try. Like that's how they learn, you know? Um, or like little messages from people um, who are teens saying like, I've watched your show. I follow your Instagram and I used to hide my arm in my pocket all the time. And now I don't just from watching you. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh. So, um, it's been pretty incredible. I, I wouldn't have really guessed this from the get go, but I feel like one of the luckiest people in the world to kind of have that, have that impact. So, yeah. So I want to go back a little bit because I think there are a lot of people that look at you and aren't where you are in terms of your confidence and your acceptance with your own body. Um, was there a time at all in your life, probably when you were younger, where you felt more ashamed and how did you move through that to go from a shame to confident? Yeah, there's definitely been um, a number of standout moments throughout my life where I have felt shame is a great word for it. It's unfortunate, but yes, um, <clears throat> uncertainty or just like a, like a discomfort being in your own skin, you know, um, I, elementary school was okay. It was junior high when, I had a couple instances of bullying um, <clears throat> where people would like, you know, put their arm in their shirt. This was just one person actually put their arm in their shirt and kind of like wave it and like, you know, get at me. And that was really gross. Um, but it, that didn't affect me as much as when I saw a dance video of me, I was in a trio. I made my dance company at the time. I was like maybe grade seven or eight. And I watched the video and I looked at my body and I was like, holy crap, I look so different. And I just felt so small. And I, I, I realized like, this is what people see when they see me like this. I look so different. Like how do they not just stare at me the whole time? And I felt very self-conscious. And at that point I, I cried to my mom for probably like a day <clears throat> and talked with her. And then it took a few days, but after her and I just like her letting me cry and me just being like, Oh, I don't like this. All, all these things. And she just didn't try to fix it. She just was like, honey, I love you. Like, here we are, blah, blah, blah. Um, after a few days, it kind of went away. Um, so I just had to really cry it out. <clears throat> and then um, later on in my adult life, I, I suffered a really, <laughs> suffered. <laughs> I had a really bad breakup. <laughs> um, and after that, I don't know why, but like my emotional, uh, like strength really dropped. And it, like, even in my adult life, when I hadn't really had too many issues, you know, in my early adult life, at that point, it made me so fragile that I, I would actually say like derogatory things about myself and my arm. And I didn't even notice, but my sister noticed. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I, I didn't realize it. But it just goes to show, I think how, how much like our, our outside surroundings can affect how we feel about ourselves. And like, it's tricky to get through. Um, but I think luckily I do um, get back to a point of strength only because I have beautiful people around me, a great community that knows me. And it's usually just the strangers that are the ones that are saying weird things or asking weird comments or saying horrible things like, oh, I'm going to pray for you so that arm can grow back or oh, I hope you find a husband that loves you for who you are, or oh, you're so beautiful, but your arm, you know, like these are real things that I get told to me, as I'm sure you do too. And um, sometimes they really, really hurt. They really hurt. And other days it's just like, it's your problem, buddy. I'm cool with who I am. So it really depends. Um, but yeah, that's kind of 
been my, my journey throughout my life. Yeah. I think it's really important to remember that it's like a roller coaster. So even Absolutely. if you get to this like summit of like, I accept my body and who I am and everybody else can go whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's, it's, there are times like there are bad like days when I'm just in a bad mood and I really don't have the patience to deal with people staring at me or asking me questions or, you know, um, and then there are many, most of my days I'm, I can handle it with grace and be like, okay, I'm willing to engage for the sake of creating that understanding. If you are someone who's watching this with a limb difference or any sort of disability, like give yourself permission to have those bad days. And it's okay to tell people like, look, I'm having a bad day. It's not, I'm, I'd be happy to answer your question on another day. Stock me in Target on another day. <laughs> um, yeah, but, <laughs> but today I can't do it. <laughs> but yeah. your experience and your story of your experience really uh, help kind of trigger an idea that that a lot of times our self worth and the way we accept ourselves is often validated by an outside force. So like if you broke mm -hmm. up and it really affected our self-esteem. I think that's normal for any person to go through, but I think yeah. when you have like an extra added like limb difference or disability, it's like, oh, um, it, <laughs> there's like more to point out that's bad about you. Um, yeah, it takes a blow to your whole psyche and your whole everything. Yes. Yes, absolutely. But regardless of what other people have to say about you, whether they're close to you or someone who's a stranger on the street, like know you have self-worth and you are special and, and valuable beyond measure. Um, and so I think that's what your YouTube channel does so brilliantly is it promotes this like full acceptance of who you are. And I, I just love that. And you mentioned that you'll hear, I, okay. So as someone without arms and legs, I've heard many different comments or um, <clears throat> like <laughs> anecdotes that kids have made up in their head about my oh God. ability. Like I'm yeah. just curious because you are like, you are so okay with having fun with your disability. Like what yeah. has been the weirdest or funniest comment that you've heard, whether it be from an adult or, or um, in a child? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that I always get the really cute questions of like, like when like little kids who look at you and they're just like, but how do you brush your teeth? You know, like just innocent little sweet questions are like, but what hand do you write with? <laughs> or like, but how do you ride a bike? Or how do you, they just like off the cuff, just say these things without thinking, which is so sweet. Cause then I can be like, here's how this happens or whatever, where they might not know ahead of time which is very sweet <clears throat> and then uh it's the adults that are the weird ones they're the ones that make the comments and and um like talk about how like I met this woman <laughs> oh my goodness I was coming out of a cafe bathroom a long time ago and she was coming in and she this was about four or five months ago maybe so I was visibly pregnant <clears throat> and she just stopped and she looked at me and she was like oh wow, the Lord's light is with you. And I was like, oh, great. Like thinking in my head, oh, she must think, you know, I'm pregnant. And she's like, want, wants to pray for me or whatever. And I'm like, that's fine. Cool, cool. Um, but no, she was like, I'm going to pray for you. You have such a golden light in you. I'm going to pray for you so hard. So your arm grows back. Miracles happen in this day. And I will help you with that. And I just looked at her like, oh, okay. But I was in like such a good mood. I was in such a good mood. I literally, I was like, you know what? Thank you so much. And I gave her this huge hug and then just like left, you know, I was just like, I could take this one of two ways. I could just be weird about it or I could just embrace it and let her have her own thoughts and not try to change it. So I don't know if that was the best, uh, you know, best thing I could have done. Probably not. But in my, in that moment, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to thank you. Sure. Give me your prayers, lady. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> your beliefs a little bit. Wow, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> and then I think um, in terms of other funny questions, 
I don't know, kids like, I'm sure you have some like really great questions that kids have asked you or other people have asked you. So I'd love to hear those um, because mine are pretty, yeah, like how do you brush your teeth? Like, can you do a cartwheel? Like, how do you do up your zipper? How do you, <laughs> um, they're just so curious to know how you do stuff, which is wonderful. Um, but yeah, do you have some good examples? I, I think it's interesting because for me, yes, the natural question is like, how do you dot, dot, dot come mm -hmm. up? And I'm sure there's a lot of adults who think it, they don't necessarily ask it, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, the weirdest things, you know what? It always happens in the bathroom. I, I have <gasps> changed people's lives in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, you should have a show called Bathroom Chats. <laughs> <laughs> right? That would be so, like, just interview people in the bathroom and, like, talk about that whole scenario. <laughs> so good. People just, like, feel, like, relaxed or, like, I don't know what it is. Like, we're woman to woman. Yeah, um, absolutely. But, yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting, but I think kids have the best stories. And probably for me, the most favorite story I ever heard, my husband and I were honeymooning in, in Hawaii, and our first day we landed, and we go to Costco, because that's what you do on your honeymoon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're in I, I enter Costco and this little girl comes up to me she's so sweet and she's like oh, are you a genie and oh. I was like oh I've never heard that one more and before so like, I'm like what do you mean and she said you know you like make one arm disappear and you make another arm disappear and I was like oh yeah mm -hmm. I'm a genie <laughs> So it's funny how like people, I think, try to reconcile in their mind what this yeah. difference means in their world to them. Yeah. yeah. And so I, yeah, so that was, that was my favorite story. You are right. I have several stories, but that is my favorite cute kid story. You know what I think is like, I think that people, especially some of the more kind of trickier comments that we deal with are harder ones or more negative perhaps or the ones where there's like pity involved I think that's when people they see us um and they immediately try to put themselves in our shoes or no they, they immediately try to picture themselves in our situation so they're like okay oh my god my life with one hand what would it be and all of a sudden they're like oh my god I couldn't do anything I couldn't like drive I couldn't this I couldn't whatever they they just think about it so quickly like as if it would be happening to them um, but that is such a kind of irrational way to think about it because like if they did lose a hand or were born with one or all of their limbs, they'd have, you know, adaptation time and support or like time to adapt. And it's not about a, a big emergency. I think that with a little bit more slowness and compassion, people can actually be like, no way. I mean, like, look, they, they're dressed, they're out and about, they got this far, they're probably okay. <laughs> we're like, how to do stuff. Rather than fabulous. Like, yeah. Rather than being like, oh my gosh, if it happened to me, I just, I couldn't survive, you know? And it's like, no, no, you are going to be fine. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like sometimes um, our outer, what appears to them as challenges is, yeah. you know, a reflection of how they may deal with challenges on a regular basis, whether it be an internal challenge or an external challenge. Um, sure. So we just, we're like the manifestation of <laughs> like challenges in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're deal helping them deal with their inner issues. Like, like you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're just yeah. Therapy session now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, you know, I look forward to one day if I'm ever in Canada, I would love to cook in the kitchen with you. That would be so oh, much fun. I would love that. And I would like to come to Hawaii to cook with you. Hello. That would okay. Be you know, where whoever better. goes there first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we wanted, my partner and I wanted to go to Hawaii um, before the baby came, but then COVID happened. So here we are. So we, it is a goal at one point to come, to come there soon. Well, uh, and I can tell you the Big Island is amazing for kids, so. Yeah, that's where we would go for sure. Yeah. For sure. And then we could cook up a storm. What do you like to cook mostly? Um, you know what? I don't, I don't. 
So I would be, (laughs) (laughs) I like to eat anything. I am such a foodie and so adventurous with with food. I, you know, I've never cooked gluten-free and vegan. um, And um, I would love, love to try some of that healthy cooking. Yummy tacos or like a nice, oh yeah, we can do lots of different things. I love Mexican food. Yes, yes. (laughs) So, and I'd love to like experiment because I am one of those people who get a little afraid about making messes and like, oh, I don't want to do it wrong. Um, and so cooking is such a great platform to experiment and yeah. be okay with getting messy. And so I'll, I'll just make sure my hair's up when we get together. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's a hazard. Like, yes, absolutely. Long, beautiful hair. It's a hazard in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexis. I so appreciate you putting yourself out there on Stump Kitchen as a platform to make us laugh, to (laughs) help us think um, about our bodies and and embracing who who we are um, as people with differences um, or people who feel different, but, you know, may not always look different. Um, Mm -hmm. And just being like accepting of who we are as individuals. I think that more than anything, I feel I get, I get out of some kitchen um, is just this message to fully embrace who you are, no matter what you look like on the outside or how you feel on the inside. So thank thank you. you. Thank you. And I want to ask our viewers, what's your favorite tool in the kitchen? It could be a spatula. It could be a mixer, a zester, your hands. (laughs) Stump. <laughs> your stump, your, your, your mouth. Your, yeah, your mouth. Yeah. Your legs. It could be. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. What is your favorite tool in the kitchen? Comment in the section below and let us know. And I would highly encourage you to go check out on YouTube Stump Kitchen with Alexis. It's a, a great show. It, it'll expand your perspectives. It'll make you laugh. It'll do so much for your life to enrich it. So um, do that. And I also want to remind you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe and share this video with anyone you feel it would benefit from it. And if you'd like to join the conversation more deeply in our community, join our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.